Second Trump assassination attempt highlights dangerous times for U.S. A U.S. Secret Service spokesperson summed up an extraordinary afternoon at the Trump International Golf Course in West Palm Beach, Florida, in five chilling words, we live in dangerous times. The spokesperson made his assessment at a press conference on Sunday afternoon, just hours after an individual had been spotted with an AK-47-style semi-automatic rifle just a few hundred yards from where Donald Trump was playing golf. The incident is being treated by the FBI as the second attempted assassination on the former president in as many months. Pictures released by law enforcement appeared to show a rudimentary sniper's nest and pointed security questions are sure to be asked about how someone was able to get so close to Trump details released at the press conference underlined how close Trump came to being shot at, yet again, so soon after a shooter grazed his ear at a rally in Butler County, Pennsylvania, on July 13. Asked by reporters how far away the gunman spotted on Sunday was to his apparent target, the sheriff of West Palm Beach, Rick Bradshaw, replied, probably between 300 and 500 yards, but with a rifle and scope like that, that's not a lot of distance. The security emergency began at 1.30 p.m. on Sunday when the Secret Service reported that shots had been fired. At the time, Trump was golfing with his friend and real estate Republican megadonor Steve Whitcoff between the fifth and sixth holes of the 18-hole course. Bradshaw explained that the area was surrounded by dense shrubbery, a security agency's waking nightmare, allowing the suspected would-be assassin to place himself on the edge of the course largely out of sight. Federal agents divulged that in addition to his AK-47-style rifle and scope, the suspect had two backpacks as, as well as a GoPro filming device, which Bradshaw said indicated that he intended to record his actions. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, the initial analysis suggested a story of two conflicting narratives. The first narrative focused on how exposed Trump was, even after security had been ramped up after the Butler incident, and how easy it appeared to have been for a heavily armed individual to gain entrance to the golf course and hide there ensconced in the bushes. As Bradshaw put it, had Trump been a sitting president at the time he would never have been allowed by the Secret Service to play golf in such an open environment. But, he is not the sitting president, and so we are limited to what the Secret Service deems possible, the second narrative is more positive. Unlike the attempted assassination on Trump in Butler County, in which the Secret Service has faced serious questions about its competence leading to the resignation of its then-director, Kimberly Cheadle, Sunday's incident appears to paint the agency in a much rosier light. The suspected gunman was spotted by a Secret Service agent who was acting as forward guard, going ahead of Trump by a hole or two to stake out potential threats. Despite the thick greenery flanking the course, the agent caught sight of a rifle barrel peeking through and engaged the suspect firing four to six rounds of ammunition. The Secret Service did exactly what they were supposed to do, and their agent did a fantastic job, Bradshaw said. From there, the apprehension of the suspect also went like clockwork. As he was being fired upon, the suspect dropped the rifle and fled through the bushes, jumping into a black Nissan that he had presumably left strategically located for a fast getaway. Also remarkably in the circumstances, a passerby saw him flee and had the wits to take a photograph of the vehicle including its license plate, such as the power of surveillance technology in Florida that within minutes the number plate was being run through the state's license plate readers. The escaping suspect was quickly tracked to the I-95 highway and promptly detained at gunpoint. As William Snyder, sheriff of neighboring Martin County where the arrest was made, noted, the suspect was unarmed and appeared relatively calm, he was not displaying a lot of emotion. The exemplary way in which federal and local law enforcement worked together to prevent what could have been a catastrophic event, followed by the consummate apprehension of the suspect, will take a lot of heat out of the situation as the inevitable blame game gets underway. But that other initial narrative also glares out and will demand answers. How, after Trump came so close to being shot in Pennsylvania, was it possible for him to be out playing golf in a setting that appears to have been impossible to secure? What is happening in a country with as painful a history of successful assassinations as America's when it sees a former president targeted not once but twice in such short order? A BDI'd Secret Service agent spared the U.S. a potentially unconscionable disaster. Is that security enough? The threat level is high, said the Secret Service spokesperson. We live in dangerous times.